Hello and welcome to Bevy Basics. In this episode, I'll be covering transforms. Due to the amount of information to cover on the topic, this video may feel quite dense with information. Do feel free to pause and rewind and you know skip around to parts if you don't understand them. Or leave a comment in the description if you need anything clarified. In this video, I'll be covering transforms in the sense of game dev and like where you may have seen them and the mathematics that applies in terms of you know how you use and what a transform is. I'll then be covering the difference between global and local transforms, the translation in a, inside the transform, the rotation and the scale, how to get and create transforms inside of Bevy, how to use your transform once you have it inside of Bevy, and then I'll move on to an example of transforms and some weird wonkiness that you can see <laughs> when using transforms in uh, non-conventional methods. It's quite fun. Almost every game engine out there will use a transform of some kind that allows the user to manipulate an object in the world space. Most people are familiar with the VEC3 transform quatrain rotation VEC3 scale transformation, as this is the transformation used by most game engines and 3D rendering software. As you can see, I have here their respective gizmos. Usually you'll see the translation as a three pointed arrow, then rotation will be three interlaced circles representing the directions of rotation, and scale will be the arrows again but with squares on the end indicating that you are changing the size as opposed to the direction. Bevy uses these transformation layouts for its local transform, though as of 0.8 has diverged its global transform to use a VEC3 translation and a 3x3 matrix for scale, rotation and shear. This is used for Alpine transformations, which is beyond my knowledge and the scope of this video. <laughs> Otherwise, this video would be another 20 minutes long. I will be linking to a video in the description explaining this in more detail if you would like to adventure on. As briefly touched on before, Bevy splits its transformations into two distinct parts. The local transformation represented by the transformation struct and the global transformation represented by the aptly named global transformation. The difference between the two is simple to understand. The transform struct is the transformation needed for the entity with respect to its parent entity. While the global transform again aptly named represents the transformation needed to be applied on a global scale and is more or less a sum of all the local transforms higher up the hierarchy. The two are equal when you are in a root node. As you can see in this diagram, the yellow cube's local transform is half and the red cube is one from the dot representing the center of the world. Whereas on the global transform, the yellow cube is actually at one and a half because it is half an offset of its parent one. This results in basically summing them together while the parent remains at one because it is still only one from the center. The way to visualize this as an application in the real world is to picture a house. The local transformation would be explaining to someone where in the house you are, next to the front door or by the fireplace, whereas the global transformation would be representing your GPS location. As you can see, depending on the application that you're applying, it is sometimes more useful to say to the person that you are by the door or by the fireplace, as opposed to giving them the coordinates of those locations. But in other situations, it may be more beneficial to give the global position of the house. Bevy will internally manage and maintain the accuracy of the global transform, so there are a few reasons you should be directly editing it yourself. It is intended for use cases where you need an object's absolute location in the world. The transform struct is composed of three fields. As I mentioned earlier, because they are very common, it is the translation represented as a vector three, the rotation represented as a quaternion, which in this case abbreviated to quat, and a scale represented again by a vector three. Translation is a representation of movement along the axes in the world. Most game developers are familiar with this concept. There are a few things I'm going to go over because they are important to certain cases when regarding to Bevy. The first major thing, Bevy uses what is called the right hand rule for its coordinates. This is in contrast to Unity Un Unreal, which both use the left hand rule, but in agreement with other free and open source software such as Godot and Blender. While these applications Gizmos would actually look like this, for they would point out of the screen as opposed to into the screen. For the remainder of this video, I'll be using the first gizmo provided. For those of you who do not know what the, what the handed rules are, it is a common rule of thumb for determining the coordinate system using the shape of one's hand. 
it is possible to make a pointing gesture with the appropriate hand. Once this is done, aligning one's thumb with the x-axis and pointing down the y-axis will result in the palm of your hand facing in the direction of the z-axis, as seen with this diagram, where the finger is pointing up, the thumb is pointing out, and the palm is facing into the screen. This is, again, a representation of the left-handed view because, the personally, the gizmo looks nicer. <laughs> It is also possible to view this as the direction that your fingers curl for which way the z-axis is. Linked in the description is a picture on the Bevy's unofficial cheat book that uh, much better represents the handed rule because it's an actual diagram. I didn't want to use it here because of copyright reasons. But it also contains a list of applications that use these systems. The other thing that it notes that is important here is that Bevy, like most 3D software, but not all, considers Y to be the up direction. The other major point when it comes to Bevy's tr translation is that even in 2D, Bevy uses a vector 3 to represent this. Though in 2D, the Z value is used to determine the layering of the entity. When it comes to rotation, Bevy again sticks to the convention of of most 3D engines using quaternions to represent their rotation. I will in the future do a video on the quat struct in Bevy and how to use it. Though it would be nice if Bevy took the bold statement of switching from using quaternions with their imaginary numbers to instead using rotaries. I've linked a video in the description of someone explaining why they believe 3D engines should use rotaries instead of quaternions and how rotaries are a more generalized form of quaternions and something about quaternions being a fluke of three-dimensional space that we use that extrapolate into 4D. So if you want to give that video a watch, it's really quite interesting. But a quick summary of quaternions is that they are four-dimensional representations of 3D rotation, consisting of X, Y, Z, and W. They are used over simple Euler representation because rotation is determined on the order of the application. So we need the imaginary plane to represent rotation universally. Found in the Bevy Basics GitHub repository, linked in the description, you can find this small app I created that allows you to rotate a cube in any set of 90 degree rotations. So that you can see that even though the same rotations are applied, if applied in a different order, they do not result in the same face pointing up. To do this, you can use the arrow keys to point left and right to select which axes you want to enter in the order at the bottom. The number of axes can be changed by changing the moves variable in before building the application. Using up and down, you can change which direction, whether clockwise or counterclockwise, that the cube will rotate on that step. And by pressing either Z, X, or Y, you can set the corresponding axes. It also, I allowed C because Z, X is right next to the keyboard, and I did C also controls Y, just for convenience. But as you can see, I've configured it to do an X rotation, a Y rotation, followed by a Z rotation, all in the clockwise direction. When I now press enter, it will perform this rotation, and you can see we had the yellow on top, and now we have white on top. If I press space, this will reset the cube back to its original position. If I then invert the order so that it is Z, Y, X, and press enter again, you will see that it performs the same rotations in a different order, and this results in the same color ending back up on top, being yellow going to yellow, as opposed to white. This is why we need the fourth dimension to represent rotation, so that it is possible to know for sure which rotation it is in. Boy, that was complicated. That tool took me way too long to make, but it was a lot of fun. Anyway, moving on to scale. The final field is the scale field and works as a representation of how much to scale the object along each axis. This is very s simple and straightforward, but can have some interesting ramifications when non-uniform scaling is applied on multiple layers of the hierarchy. This will be shown more explicitly in the example section. To get a transform, there are a whole bunch of methods provided to create it from its default data using the from methods allowing you to create the transform with the respective data, a 4x4 matrix containing all the data, or individually the transform, rotation, and scale. There are also the with family of methods that allow you to modify in place the transform with the respective additional data. This is used so that you can create and add a transform inside a struct without needing to pre-allocate and then assign its values placing it inside the struct. You can simply call the from and then dot with will consume and then replace it. 
It is also possible, and in most cases, the actual desired behavior to access transforms through queries. This will work like any other query, and you can find my video on queries on my channel. Once you have a transform, there is a huge collection of methods that can be used on it, such as rotation methods, getting local directions such as up and local x, or making it face a specific position. You can even convert it back to its 4x4 matrix or alpha matrix. There are too many methods to go into any detail about them, so I direct you to the bevy documentation or source code if you need more. There is like half dozen rotations that are all convenience functions. So instead of providing a quaternion, you can provide like rotate along the x-axis, rotate along the y-axis, or rotate along a specific specified axis and all that. I will, however, note because it is confusing for new users such as when I first started out, there is a looking at and a look at method. One consumes the method and returns a value while the other modifies the value from the reference. The look at method is, will modify the value in a reference. Looking at will return a new transform with the modified values so it is facing. The global method only has the translation version of these methods and the corresponding up and left directions. It is possible to get all three scale rotation and translation by using the two scale rotation translation method. Though this again goes to show that the global transform is intended to not be modified by the user and is instead about accessing the data on a global space. Okay, on to some examples. Again, linked in the description is my Bevy Basics GitHub repository. In there, you'll find an example called transform. In this example, you will see these two cubes. The way this is configured is the bottom cube is at a transform of one and the, the white cube is at a transform of one as well but is a child of the red cube, so it's also offset. This allows for certain things to happen. So using the, the WASD Q&E keys, I can control the cubes and move them around in all three axes. Pressing space will reset the cubes back to their original position. This will be important when we get to rotation and scale, because they can be really hard to get back to original. By holding the R key, I can then set it to rotation mode. This will just simply make the axes rotate. Instead of move along the axes, it will rotate along speci the specified axis. As you can see, this can result in some really interesting looking behavior and can have some really cool effects of stacking multiple objects inside each other and rotating them all at the same rate. But because of the fact that they are children of each other, the, cube, the further in the cubes are in the hierarchy, they will respectively rotate at x times the rotation speed as seen here, the white cube is rotating twice as fast. This is also seen with the translation where the, the white cube is actually moving twice as far. If I reset one last time, by holding the, the T key, I can scale. This is much more apparent that it's twice the, the rate, is that the scale of the white cube grows twice as fast as the orange because it is being scaled both by the orange cube growing and itself growing, and is a representation of the global. Now, what I was saying earlier in the video about how it can get really weird when you scale non-uniformly is if I scale and then ro and rotate the cubes, I can end up with some really wonky shapes and the scaling will no longer seem to be behaving like you would expect. If I scale in a single direction, it can actually have the result of scaling in two directions. By resetting and specifically scaling to 45 degrees on a particular axis, when I scale, I will actually scale weirdly. By randomly rotating and scaling the transformations, it is, can become quite apparent that it can be quite confusing to work with scale and rotation of non-uniform behavior on objects. This is obviously amplified by the fact that I am controlling both at the same time, but it is possible that when scaling on uniformly, it can mess up the rotation of objects in the children. This is why most of the time when you are scaling something that is designed to fit together, you will only scale the overall object and should parent them all together instead of scaling them independently. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. I really recommend checking out these tools on my Bevy Basics GitHub because some of them are just fun to play with at the moment. I've been trying harder to make them more actual like examples as opposed to simply code that is seen in the videos. But Please like, comment, subscribe. I am getting close to a thousand subscribers with the fact that I've grown immensely since Bevy 0.8's come out. I've 
grown so much faster than all my previous videos. And I hope to see you all in the comments discussing transforms because it's a very, very dense topic.